evening and thank you for tuning in to University of Leslie's or Leslie University's health and wellness series. Um, tonight, we're gonna to take a little bit of a twist on the Thanksgiving meal or the family meal. And tonight we're gonna to do a little bit different. It's not gonna be the, the whole turkey in the oven stuff, the whole bit, but we're gonna take a twist of it and we're gonna look at putting it together as a, a, a roasted breast of turkey. We're gonna do a gluten-free and dairy-free stuffing. We're actually gonna do a, a gluten-free and dairy-free casserole, a bean casserole. And if we have time, we'll do a little special dessert, um, which could be fun, but we'll see how the hour goes. Um, so tonight we're gonna to start off, like I said, we're gonna show you how to put together a turkey. Um, but instead of the turkey cooking all day in the oven, which is fine, and that's, you know, um, a great way to go. But in this day and age, especially with the pandemic, especially not everybody getting together, and hopefully you all are, um, this is a smaller version of that. And instead of doing the whole turkey, we're going to do a turkey breast uh, and get that done. And we're going to sear it off. And actually, it's only really going to take about 25 minutes to cook and maybe about another 15 minutes to get together. So let's get started. And of course, I've kind of prepped a few things out already, um, but let's get started. And we'll go with our um, turkey breast that I already uh, deboned. Uh, and you can get these in a the store. Um, you can also get them fresh uh, from the farm, uh, which would be great. Uh, we do that every year, actually, uh, for our family. Um, but this is a turkey breast here, and we're actually going to sear this off. So while I'm getting this going, I'm going to turn my oven on. And like I said, we're going to take our breast here. We're going to season it up a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit of olive oil. Now this particular one, we're going to take a little bit of olive oil. We're going to have some chopped sage, uh, a little bit of fine chopped garlic. We're going to put on the breast and then we're going to uh, coat all that, season it up with a little salt and pepper. Uh, and then we're going to have uh, the carrots, the celery, a little bit of mushroom in there. And uh, then we're going to roast the whole dish off. Chop a little fresh garlic and get all that set. I've already chopped all of the stage. Um, what's nice, and I'm not sure if you have a luxury, but it's nice to go out to the yard and pick the fresh sage. And later on, I have a little bit of fresh uh, rosemary also. Um, so it's nice just to go out and pick it in the yard. Um, so, anyway, what we're doing is I have my two breasts here. I'm going to coat it a little bit of olive oil on both sides. All right, now I'm going to use my fingers and I'm gonna get underneath the skin of the breast itself. I'm not gonna pull it all the way apart. I just wanna make a pocket um, inside on both of these. And then what we're gonna do is I'm going to take a little bit of that fresh chopped garlic. I'm going to put that underneath the breast. I'm going to take a little more olive oil and put that on my hands. I'm going to put that underneath on the breast on both of these. There we go. All right, and then, like I said, we're going to take a little bit of the fresh sage um, that I have. This is sage here, came out of the garden. A little fresh sage. But I already chopped it. We'll take a little bit of fresh sage, put that underneath. Fresh sage is always that nice fall spice. Love that or herb. It's not a spice, it's an herb. Um, so we'll have that all there. Wash my hands again. Now we're going to season this with a little bit of salt and pepper. I happen to like kosher salt, it's pure. It's not iodized. Biggest thing with iodized salt, again, is it has iodine in it. And it doesn't dissolve all the way. Best, best story I have about, about iodized salt is if you ever seen the commercial for the French fries on McDonald's, you see the iodized salt bouncing all over the place. So it's not really seasoning your meat, it's bouncing all over the place, so the, uh, or the French fries. 
All right, and then when you get the kosher salt, what it does is it automatically, once it hits a liquid, automatically dissolves. So you know when you're seasoning it, you've actually seasoned what you saw, which is the whole idea. All right, so I've seasoned those guys there. I have my iron pan in the back, and I'm gonna sear these guys off. Inside down. You watch my hand multiple times tonight. Uh, but skin side down so it gets a nice golden brown on the skin. You know, cutting board. And if you noticed, I didn't have a turkey on the cutting board because, again, turkey, germs, all that good stuff, bacteria. Um, I want to make sure that was all separated. Uh, but now that I did that, we want to add our onion into this. So this particular dish has onion, has carrot, has celery, and mushroom uh, in this particular dish. And it's all roasted. Uh, so again, it's a dish that takes about 25, maybe 30 minutes, depending on the thickness of the thickness of the breast itself. What you want to do is you're trying to get to a temperature of about 160 inside. You're going to let it rest for about 15 minutes. And by the time you serve it, it should be at 165, um, nice and juicy. Um, and so I'm going to take and cut my onion. I'm going to add this right to my pan. I'm going to roast that off while I'm roasting the roast of the turkey. Now, while all this is going on and I've already done it, you want to make sure that you preheat your oven to 350 degrees. All right, so while we're roasting that, now, like I said, we have our carrots. All right now, these carrots here are a medium, almost like a baby type carrot. You don't have to really peel this. You can have all the nutrients, all that in the skin can stay. Um, but if you want to, you can definitely peel these. These are all organic. Everything you're gonna see tonight is all organic. Um, but I am gonna peel these uh, just to uh, make sure that we're Nice and clean. I did already wash these, but this way here takes all the sediment, takes everything out, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, I'm not actually going to also peel the celery, uh, more so just to get the stringiness uh, from the celery. All And again, this is this is nice because you can get this done while you're searing off your your turkey. And again, depending on how many guests you're going to have and all this, this will definitely feed uh, ten people easily. Um, so you don't have to. Uh, so you might want to add more carrots, things like that, as you go. Uh, what I'm also going to do right now is I am going to just snip the ends off just to get the strings. Uh, from the carrots off, put those off to the side. And like I said, we're going to grab a little bit of celery and put that one back. And I just want to get the ribs um, off the celery here from the stringiness. That's all I'm looking for. So a little, little peel on this. Again, you can hear the turkey in the background sizzling away. Like I said, I just want to get a nice golden brown on that. Uh, and this, as you can tell, we're doing a, a family meal, Thanksgiving dinner meal. Um, this way here, again, you have a family come over, but you're not spending all day long in the kitchen. You can get this all done within an hour and a half. 
spend time with the family, play some games, have fun. Uh, what do you want it's all about? All right, now that we have this here, put those, and like I said, we're going to do some mushrooms in this dish. So for this dish here, I'm going to have a little bit of cremini mushrooms in here. Um, since we're going to roast these, all right, I'm just going to quarter these mushrooms. And the neat part is we're going to add all this into um, the pan. Nice part about the iron pan and all that, it's going to be a one dish meal. How many Thanksgiving turkeys did you have with vegetable and all that being a one dish meal? All right, you want to make sure your mushrooms are basically all the same size. So basically, we have our mise en place all set. Now let's look at our turkey. My phone. At my pond. Like I said, I get a nice golden brown. Not sure if you can see that, a nice golden brown on the on the turkey. Nice caramelization on the onions. I'll turn those over. We'll let that cook for about another five minutes. Well, you can see all that. But it gives a little caramelization there. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to top all this off with our mushrooms. And our veg. And again, that would normally cook for about another five minutes. We got a nice golden brown on the back side. Put all of that can go right into the oven. All right, and that will cook, like I said, for about 25 minutes to 30 minutes. You want to get the inside temp to be about 160 degrees. You bring that out, you're going to let that rest. Now, the nice part about doing a webinar like this, I already have it done. So when you get to that point there, you can serve it up this way. You can take this guy here. And take our turkey breast off. Now, depending on how you want to do this, normally you have dark meat since we just did the turkey breast. We have a tenderloin, so we can slice up the tenderloin. Pan that out. Then you have your turkey breast. I'll be back over there. And within an hour and a half, especially if you've got a small group, you know, again, this will feed about 10. You know, you have your Thanksgiving dinner here. Now, let's say you'll, you'll want to do your, you want to do um, chicken thighs, things like that. You definitely can. Um, you can do the same method, uh, roasting them off and all that. Again, your internal temperature would come to 160 degrees. Pull those out. It's going to take that, the, because it's on the bone, will take longer. Uh, instead of 30 minutes, you might look at 45 minutes or something along that line. But again, not, uh, not as long as a regular, uh, a regular Thanksgiving meal where you're cooking it for two and a half hours. Again, if you're cooking a Thanksgiving uh, turkey, uh, as you know, 
it is it's uh, for for one pound you're cooking the turkey basically for 20 minutes. Um, so depending on how big your turkey is, normally you get one of those 18 to 24 pound turkeys. So you're going to cook that for a while. Um, again, easy enough here. I'm showing you a different way to do this. All organic veg, uh, simple roast. Uh, everything's done at the same time. Uh, it gives you a, a different, simpler way uh, to look at the at the Thanksgiving feast. So now, let's look at a couple different things. I'm going to get my water on, and we'll look at the uh, at the green bean casserole. But before we do that, or while we're looking for that water to boil, I'm going to also start our stuffing. All right. So now our stuffing is going to be a big stuffing. So obviously, we didn't have the turkey to stuff the turkey. Um, but the neat part about this, it's going to be all gluten free. So we're going to have our gluten free breads. Uh, I picked these up today. Um, I have an artisan uh, whole grain, or not whole grain, but ancient, ancient grains. And the neat part about the ancient grains uh, with all of the manufacturing, everything that we've done uh, this day and age, uh, where we're trying to get back to organic, get away from the pesticides, all of that. When you have your ancient grains, um, actually some of the celiac disease and people that are uh, basically celiac, uh, can actually have the ancient grains because it's not the same. It doesn't have the same. It doesn't have the same makeup that we have uh, nowadays with all our grains and all our processing. Uh, so, uh, so you can actually like even with the sourdoughs, sourdough bread. Some of the sourdough breads, you have people that are actually celiac that actually can have uh, the sourdough breads. Uh, so it's interesting. I would talk to your allergen. Uh, allergist before you uh, go with me, but um, study up on it, read up on that, and see what uh, see what that looks like. Uh, but anyway, back to this. So I have my gluten-free breads. I want to do a couple different ones um, just to give it a variety. So we're going to um, dice these up. And as I dice these up, I'm going to lay them out on a sheet tray. I have, and we're going to toast them. Pasty is what we're going to do. So we're going to toast these guys up. All right, I got a little bit of each one. I got a baguette, like I said, and the ancient grains. And the other one I got was, was a multigrain. I knew there was something in there I was trying to do. We have the multigrain. All right, again, big dice. And the reason we want to toast this is because we're going to add chicken stock to this. And we want to make sure that it doesn't get soggy. So we, that's why we want to toast this. Um, so again, cutting up our breads, little baguette. Um, the gluten-free gluten -free baguette isn't like a normal French baguette where you have a nice uh, hearty crust on it. Um, they haven't quite figured that part out, but it's not bad. I guess it's all gluten-free. Now, the other thing you can do, and I've done for years, is instead of doing all these breads, you can actually make a cornbread stuffing also, uh, which would also be a, a gluten-free stuffing. You can, again, um, many different things. Tonight, um, I'm not gonna put any meats into it. This one here, I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, Granny Smith apple. I'm gonna use some uh, roasted pecans. A little bit of sage, a little bit of rosemary, touch of garlic, touch of onion. And season it up that way. All right, this one here. All right. I'm just using a little canola oil spray on here, give a little Christmas to it. All right, and these will go right into the oven. And we'll toast these up while we're waiting. While we're waiting for our water to boil for our green beans. So we'll continue on with our stuffing. Like I said, we're going to take a 
I'm going to take some Granny Smith apples. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm cutting the apple so I don't get the core. And then I'll dice these guys up. So I'm trying to stay away from the core, trying to stay away from the seeds. That's enough for what we're doing. And actually, when uh, when this is over, we'll send a, a link out to the video. You can watch it again on YouTube. But when we do that, uh, I would believe I can send the recipes uh, to you uh, for everything that we're doing. And if you signed up for this, I'm going to have you email anyway, so I can definitely send you the recipes. Jumper. All right, so we get all this guy stuff. Move that off to the side, get rid of these. All right, now we're gonna do, like I said, we'll do a little diced onion on this. Make sure I turn my sheet. Make sure I have everything there. Now, if you wanna make this, uh, gluten-free, dairy-free. Right? Instead of using the butter, you can just use an olive oil when you go to saute. Uh, when you go to saute in your veg, uh, your veg and your apples and all that. Uh, so, um, with that being said, uh, I am actually going to make this gluten-free, dairy-free. So I am going to use the olive oil and not the butter uh, when we do this. Okay, I'm not going to make it nut free though, because I'm going to use the uh, pecans. But again, you know your family, so you can adapt the recipe any way you need to to accompany whatever dietary needs you need for your family. All right, those are our onions. A little bit of garlic in there. Again, if you don't like chopping garlic, you don't want to get it all on your fingers and all that, you can always get uh, chopped garlic in the store. The only I just don't have a like chopped garlic in the store. Um, you have phosphates and things like that in it. Which, uh, which is just not pure. And since we're trying to go all organic and everything that we're doing here, uh, taking a few seconds to chop up some fresh garlic is not a problem. All right, so we'll get that hot. Let me a little of that. Very good. And now we want our pecan. We'll get those roasting. So I'm going to chop these up. I'm going to roast these separate uh, because I don't. I want these to um, roast up. And the reason you want to roast up your pecans is you want to get the oils from the pecans uh, coming out. Uh, that way, there uh, it's like a refresh almost for your uh, for your pecans. They've been in a bag. They've been wherever. You get to start getting the oils out, start roasting a little bit, you get a deeper flavor in there. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do here. Uh, and like I said, because you have the natural oils, um, you really don't need um, to put any olive oil or anything like that in this, or butter for that matter, um, because the natural oils will come right out. Get those a little more pecans in there. But hopefully you see how easy basically making a meal is. Um, obviously, I like to cook, that's why I got in this. Um, but I enjoy it, I have fun with it. Uh, 
I've been in this in this business for an awful long time. And now I am over at Leslie as a director of dining services over there. All right, so we have all this here. All right, we've got our pan getting hot. olive oil in there. I'm going to move this this way a little bit. We're going to start off with our garlic and onion first before I put our carrots in there. We'll saute this down. Okay, so we'll saute that. We'll hold off on this. Um, like I said, we're going to use a little rosemary in this. We're going to use a little bit of sage in this. Uh, for this one here. When we go to saute up this, we'll put a little salt and pepper in there. So that'll work. Uh, let me make sure I know what I'm talking about. Try and all that. Oh, and I was going to put a little parsley in there too. So there we go. So I got all three. There we go. Nice little herb combination in there. Uh, so we have all of that. Those little roasting. Let's take a look at our bread. Okay, we'll let that toast up a little bit. Nice. So, so that's working. We have all that. Now, while we're doing that, let's see what we got back here. All right, so we got steam for our beans. So we have that one going. Now let's look at our green bean casserole. So we're waiting for our other stuff to saute. So our green bean casserole, we're gonna make this gluten-free, dairy-free. So um, actually before we do our beans, why don't we do the onions first? Um, so you know how you used to do the old uh, Campbell's soup, mushroom soup with the French's uh, onions, all right? We're gonna do something a little bit different uh, on this one. And we're gonna make our onions, but this time here, with a gluten-free flour. Like I said, we're gonna make it dairy-free. So we're gonna use oat milk instead of regular milk. To, and we're gonna do that, what we're gonna do is basically dredge that with our onion. Then we're going to coat our onion with a little bit of gluten-free flour. We're going to bake that off. So we're going to make little onion rings right now. So cutting some thin rings right here. About maybe half the onion. All right, and then the other half of the onion, we're actually going to make our sauce. Um, so I have regular mushrooms. I have some mini mushrooms that we can make with the sauce. And I'll show you how that goes. But let's get these spread out on the pan first. Just break up the rings. Slide them around the pan. I'm going to take some of our oat milk. We're just going to coat our oat milk. Um, dairy free, gluten free. And we're just going to coat the onions. We're going to let them sit in there for a little while. All right, that just has to sit. And we'll drain those off in a minute. All right, we got our nice roasted pecans. They're all set to go. We can let them sit. We have our onions and garlic going. We're getting those a little bit translucent, which is fine. So now when we get to this point here, we can add in our apples. So let's add our apples to this. Now, the difference between a fresher 
So when you're cooking with a fresh herb and you're cooking with a dry herb, all right, so dry herbs, uh, well, think about, think about maybe, I don't know if you had a grandmother that made tomato sauces on Sundays and things like that. I happen to grow up that way. And so when they would make their tomato sauce, obviously they would get the tomatoes out of the garden. Um, they would get those all set to go, can those uh, for the fall. And then they would make tomato sauce from there. So the tomatoes would go in, you would do the onion kind of like what we're doing here. Um, but then they would put their herbs in and they would use their dry herbs, not fresh herbs. All right, if you use dry herbs, all right, that means that now, think about it, you, you, you dehydrate them, so now you're rehydrating them and you're getting the flavor coming out. So you have uh, the flavor from your herbs coming out and pairing into the sauce, which is what you're looking for. When you're using fresh herbs, all right, all right, if I did that with a fresh herb, fresh herbs are going to extract all their flavor within the first 10 minutes. Once that happens, you're done. So you won't have, so you won't have, you won't have the same flavor, the flavor will dissipate, and you're just gonna have greens in your, in your sauce, all right? So uh, why I'm talking this way is because for our stuffing, I'm gonna do the same type of thing, all right? I want to extract the flavor, I wanna get the flavor out, um, but since we're gonna bake off our stuffing, we can kind of bake that off and I can incorporate it as we make the rest of the stuffing. So I'm not gonna put my fresh herbs into this and cook it down now. All right, as you can tell, I was cutting up my beans for my, for my greens and casserole. So I have my steamer pot going. I have a nice, uh, a nice basket for my beans so I can put my beans in. I'm gonna steam off my beans. Like I said, I already have part of it going with our onions. There we go. We'll put these in, we'll start steaming these guys off. Get that going. Still sauteing on. Apple, we just want to see my apples get a little softer uh, while they're going, uh, which is good. So we have all that now. What we're gonna do is, now that I'm steaming off my green beans, uh, I'm gonna take the rest of my onion. I'm gonna dice up my onion for my sauce for my green bean casserole. Hopefully I'm not confusing you by jumping back and forth on recipes. But by doing this, you get, you know, your cooking is done, you get to relax with the family. And that's the whole idea. Getting around dinner, relaxing. Have a good bottle of wine. Always good stuff. All right, we'll put this off to the side. That's for our green beans. I'm gonna grab some mushrooms. I have regular mushrooms here, and I have my cremini mushrooms. All right, and with these guys here, we're gonna dice these guys up. All right, so on these here, basically I do a slice and do a cut down the middle. And just a dice. And again, I'm gonna leave these separated because I'm gonna cook my onions first. Then I'm gonna add my mushrooms to the dish. Uh, and if you can start to tell the theme, I like to do one pan cooking if I can. This is gonna be no different. When I get done steaming off my green beans, I'm actually gonna use that pot to make my sauce. All righty. And I know that my apples are done, so I'm gonna jump from one to the other. Okay, we have our toasted bread, nice little toast to it. i put that in our plate. There we have some in there, so we go. All right, so I have my toasted, my toasted bread all set to go here. I have 
I have my onions and apples all set to go. They said now, I'm going to put the back. I'm going to get a dry towel. There we go. Burn my hands. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of sage. Touch of rosemary. And again, you know, cooking and recipes are a guideline. If you don't like some of the stuff that we're putting in here and you maybe like some other stuff, by all means, flip it around. It's your palate, it's your family. All right, so now, I have all of those getting married. I'm gonna take my spatula, here we go. I'm gonna add all of this to my bowl. There we go. All right, and now we just have to put a little salt and pepper in here. You want to be generous with the salt and the pepper because you have the bread in there very, very dense. It's going to absorb that almost like a potato would. And then chicken stock. So again, I have my organic chicken stock. I'm gonna coat all this with our chicken stock. Again, if you want to, you can do the turkey stock too. That's always cool. Um, so again, whichever one you're looking to use. And on this one here, and you coat all this, what do I got beans? It would be nice to coat them. That'll help uh, blanch those steam. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm just coating my bread, everything else. I want to make sure that I get enough stock in there to make sure that it's moist. And again, if you want to add chestnuts to this, you want to add, um, you know, you can add sausage to this if you want to go that way. I'm just trying to make this, um, you know, vegan also or vegetarian, um, but you can always add sausage to these things. All right, still needs a little more chicken stock. All right, and once we get all of this, it's going to go right into a baking dish and right into the oven. And again, it's going to bake for about, about 25 minutes, 30 minutes, until you get a nice browning on top and nice and hot in the middle. All right, just gotta grab my dish. All right, got my little baking dish here. Now, the other thing you can do, if you're doing your traditional turkey, you can take the same stuffing. And you could stuff your turkey with it. Um, obviously, when you're doing that kind of thing, you want to make sure you have an internal temperature there of 165. And again, the neat part about this. And as I put one in, I can take one out. All right, so here is our stuffing. All righty. All right, has everything in there. Gives you a nice, nice moist stuffing in there. Uh, the apples, all that pecans in there, very nice. I have a nice little flavor to it. I know you can't taste it, but I'm going to. Nice little flavor. I got my sage coming through, so that's very nice. And again, 25, 30 minutes, you're, you have your stuffing done. So not bad. All right, let's take a look at our beans. Time, what do I do my time? 
lost my time. I put on. All right, give those another minute. Uh, let me just see what I got here, make sure I got all that. So your stuffing is in there, that is complete. All right, and now we'll get to our green bean casserole. Making sure I have everything there. I'm gonna have my oat milk, onion, garlic, green beans, and olive oil, garlic, dry thyme, oats, I have everything. Look at that. All right, so that works. Let me take a look right here. All right, I need to grab, can you give me that dish right there? Perfect. All right, so for this one here, because we're gonna make the sauce, get this all the way in the oven right away, uh, what we're gonna do is I don't have to, I'm not gonna cool these beans. I'm gonna add them right to my casserole pan. Okay, so I have those in my casserole pan. I'm gonna empty my water. All right, let that sit for a second. While I'm doing that, now I'm gonna finish my onions. Remember my straight onions I was talking about? All right. Yep. All right, so put it on the right. All right, so I'm gonna drain off my oat milk. I'm gonna put my onions back on my tray. All right. I'm separate them out a little bit. Now I'm gonna coat these. You're good. I'm gonna coat these with my gluten-free flour. Just gonna do a little sprinkle on top. I'm going to roast those off in the oven. All right, while that's happening, get rid of that. We'll go back to our pan. I'm going to add in a little olive oil. I'm going to add in my onions. I'm going to saute up my onions a little bit. I'm going to throw in a touch of garlic, maybe, and lose it. There we go. All right. Add in my garlic. I'm going to saute that down there a little bit. Once that's translucent a little bit, which we're running low on time, so I'm going to, uh, I got it. So we'll let that fly and add a couple more mushrooms to this. In, we're going to cook those down. Of course, you guys could smell this the mushroom or the garlic or the onion smell awesome. So, we have that. This one here, remember, I was talking about making a sauce, doing all that. This time, I'm going to use a little bit of dry thyme in this. So, we're going to hit the dry thyme in here. And what happens and why I'm doing this is you're going to want to. Let your mushrooms cook down a little bit. You're going to get a little liquor from the mushrooms coming out. From that, the thyme will interact with that with that uh, liquid. You'll get that marriage of the mushroom flavor, the thyme in there. That's what you're looking for. Um, as that goes, then we're going to use a little bit 
Again, we're making this dairy free, gluten free. Um, back to our oat milk. We're going to add our oat milk into this so that we can make our sauce. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever heard a slurry, what a slurry is. All right, but a slurry is usually cornstarch and and either a water or I made it with the oat milk. So I don't like using cornstarch, okay? Um, when you use cornstarch in a sauce, the cornstarch always keeps on thickening, all right? It doesn't give you a clear sheen. It kind of gives you a dull shine to it. Um, when, you use, when you use arrowroot, arrowroot, once it hits a boiling, uh, boiling point, it's as thick as it's going to get. It's not going to get any thicker. The sheen on it gives you a nice, nice luster of a sheen to it. Uh, and it's just a better product all the way around. You're going back into organics, things like this. This is more of a pure product than the cornstarch. Not that, not that uh, the cornstarch is a bad thing and not that it's not organic. It is. Um, but um, it's just a better, to me, cooking wise, it gives you a better product in the end. Um, so. With that being said, I just have to wait for this to boil. Once this boils, I just want to make sure I have everything in there, which I do. Um, once this boils, here's my slurry. So what I did was I took a little bit of arrowroot and I took a little bit of oat milk. Right, and I made up this mixture. Once this mixture fits, it will, it will thicken automatically once it hits the uh, boiling point. Uh, and you got to watch how much you use. You don't want to make it a paste, you don't want to make it a sauce. Um, and then we want to season it with a little bit of salt and pepper, um, also to give it some flavor. All right, so we'll let that, uh, let that come to a boil. Getting close. And now we can finish that dish. Um, of course, we've already made that dish, so you can see the end product when I get to come up uh, for what we're doing. Right. And the slurry, you want to make sure it's, it's well combined as it sits. It won't, uh, the paste will live on the bottom, so it won't be a, a, a liquid. Uh, combined liquid, I should say. Uh, again, I know you can't see me, but what I'm doing is I'm regulating how much I put in, a little bit of a time, I watch it boil, see how thick my sauce is. And then I got that little more. Now they'll tell you, or I'll tell you too, what you want to do is you want to get it so that it coats the back of the spoon. Of course, you can't see it because it's all white anyway, or liquid. Um, but it's got a little bit of drip, so I can still add a little bit more to this. All right, so now that we have this here, and we have our sauce here, all of this goes in, we mix all this into it. Take our onions. Now they should be brown, but these aren't. But for the sake of five minutes, we top these off. These should be brown, but we'll top these off on top. Now we're going to bake this anyway.
That goes into the oven. And presto, when you pull it out, you have your toasted onions, you have your beans, you have everything there. You have your nice little sauce so that it looks just like you had when you were doing your other mushroom soup and all of that. So a nice little dish. So, what's that? Not long. Huh? Eight minutes. All right. All right. What we're going to do, because I have eight minutes left, is I'm going to make some noise. So, what we're going to do, instead of doing a pie, we're going to do a smoothie. All right, so this one here is a pumpkin pie smoothie. All right, and again, we're going to make this dairy free. So to do that, we're going to go back to our oat milk. All right, we have an oat yogurt. We have gluten free graham crackers, honey graham crackers. All right, we're going to do a little bit of ice. Oh, we're going to do some pump. Like I will open that. Well, ice will go in, maybe. There we go. Put ice in there. We're going to take our pumpkin pie filling. make this thick and rich you can take and take that pumpkin pie filling and make it into little cubicles put it into like a little muffin pan and you can freeze them off so this thing here will become even richer that way as far as richer or thicker i should say uh, when you're doing that this is just a plain oat oat yogurt and then we're going to go with our oat milk We're going to go with a touch of cinnamon. And then we're going to put our graham cracker in there. We're going to blend this guy. It might go some. Touch of cinnamon. All right. And then a couple of graham crackers in there. Actually, we'll do one. I'm going to break that up a little bit, put them in there. Close it down. I'm going to make some noise. Maybe. Like I said, if you freeze this, We have our we have our smoothie. Give it a little taste. So instead of a pumpkin pie, it tastes like a pumpkin pie. Uh, but you have a nice little smoothie. Again, don't have to bake it. You're set to go. 
here. What we did tonight was an alternative to your family meal, your Thanksgiving meal, with your stuffing, your turkey, your green bean casserole, and your smoothie for the end. So here's a twist on anything you can do for a Thanksgiving family meal. Again, um, what we'll do is I can send out the recipes uh, or just email me, I can send them out that way also. And I know that this will be ready uh, to be distributed out also uh, through YouTube. Uh, so again, thank you very much. If you guys have any questions, I don't know if there's any questions in the chat line. Uh, I must've been very thorough because there's no questions uh, when I did this, but thank you very much for tuning in. Again, I'm Tim Grills. I'm the director at uh, Leslie University uh, for dining. Thank you very much. Happy holidays and have a great night.